the beginning of a process to try to make sure the 140th General Assembly members and the governor get the message that this is not a way to go to rebuild. We need to build in the community or build or renovate to acquire the houses that people need to have. Thank you very much. When I had to make the decision for Fred to leave the training center, it was very frightening. I didn't know what to expect. I did not know how Fred would adjust to this transition. Fred was in the training center ever since he was nine years old. Can you imagine being removed from your home at the age of nine? Fred is 63 years old now. I didn't know what would happen, but I was willing to take the chance because I wanted to spend more time with my brother and I want him to enjoy where he lives. People with developmental disabilities are still fighting to break free from segregation and isolation every day, whether it be on a waiver wait list or whether they live in an institution. People with developmental disabilities do not want to live in institutions. We want the same thing that all Virginians want, a life in our community. Much like the schools did some time ago, it is time for me to finally realize that separate but equal is not equal. For those that need that level of care currently provided in an institution, let us find smaller, homier places so they can have better health and more dignity and self-esteem, where they can be called friend and neighbor, not a patient or a bed number. Charlie defies you to call him a patient. He's a remarkable little boy, and our home, neighborhood, and community are better because he walks the halls of his school and the streets where we live. As his parent, I'm asking you to bring this benefit to your community, strengthen the supports for parents and caregivers, for nurses and case managers, and bring these amazing lives into your own. Uh, my name is Kirk Cox, and I represent the city of Colonial Heights in Chesterfield. And I guess my, uh, I got a lot of my hometown people. Uh, and really, I want to focus on my hometown people because several years ago, they started having the legislators meet with uh, the advocates for folks with intellectual disabilities so we could really put a face to the problem. And I tell you, it was just heart-wrenching, good and bad. I mean, first of all, I think government's responsibility in this area is just is probably number one. But number two, the abilities of folks with intellectual disabilities is amazing what they can do. And I think we really saw that, some of us, for the first time. And so last year, uh, it was my pleasure to carry the budget amendment that was able to get 600 MR waivers in, in a fairly tough year. Yeah. You know, I, I get to be the legislator that got to carry the amendment, but we'd have never gotten that amendment passed without crowds like this in every public hearing we had. And you were just overwhelming. The stories, et cetera, really had an effect. Our friends get married and even have children. We also talked about that we can make things better in Virginia. We think, we think that we are stronger when we work together like a team. When we don't, our voice is too weak. And we are not strong when we come together and speak as one, we are stronger. We want to do that. We will hope you will help us work together to stand up for our rights.